Sorry, for some reason, uh, the video got disconnected, the call got disconnected. I'm continuing the recording. Uh, I'm not too sure where I left, but I'm continuing from, uh, yeah, we went through this map and then I went through all the four chapters. That is chapter one talks about the confidence of the believer, two talks about the supreme example of Christ. Chapter three talks about the ultimate goal of the believer. Chapter four talks about the believer's meditation. With that, we moved on to knowing of Christ. So the all four chapters talk about um, the joy in knowing Christ. Uh, chapter one, one verse 21 talks about joy in living for Christ. Chapter 2 verse 5 talks about joy in serving Christ in unity. Chapter 3, 10 talks about joy in knowing Christ. Chapter 4, 13 talks about joy in resting in Jesus Christ. So when we look into these each chapters, we see despite our circumstances, you know, there is a joy that we get when we are rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus. And throughout these four uh, chapters, we see that there is a very warm, encouraging, and affirming, affirming tone that Apostle Paul is recording. And the key words that we see in this letter is rejoice, Christ, mind, and act are the four key words that has been used often. And uh, the theme of this letter is by centering our life around Christ, we can experience the true joy. Being said that, there are a few themes that I've listed here, that the Christ is the ultimate example for believers. Christians can experience joy in suffering as Christ. Uh, I thought I've shared... Let me share the PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, so this is the theme. We all can see. Okay, we all can see. So this is the theme that Christ is the ultimate example for believers. Christians can experience joy in suffering just as Christ suffered. Christians can also experience joy in serving. We can also experience joy in believing and joy in giving. So these are certain themes that we can come across in these letters. Been said that there's a key verse, Philippians chapter 1, verse 21 is the key verse, which says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. This is the attitude that we need to have when we are in Christ Jesus. For Apostle Paul, for him to, um, he was ready uh, because the 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 intense of the persecution was so much against him that pushed him to make such statement so if he is free not in any kind of any prison if he's free he goes out and ministers to people by sharing the gospel but if he's on chains behind bars he praises god and worships him and if he's been threatened to be killed he says even if you kill me for me to die is gain because I can be in the presence of God, praising him directly face to face. Look at the attitude. There is no fear. There is no fear. This is the state that Apostle Paul is in. That this complete boldness for me to live is live for Christ. For me to die is again gain because I will be in the presence of Christ. This is the attitude that you and I should have and carry within us. So some of the key verses that I recorded here is this. Philippians 1, 6 said, God will finish what he begins in you. To live in Christ is to die and gain. Uh, in chapter 2, we see, Christ is the example of humility. And in chapter 3, we see that Apostle Paul is encouraging the believers at Philippi to press towards the higher call that God has called. He's just encouraging them, set your focus, set a goal on Christ. Let him be that focus so that we can go. Do not get distracted with the other persecution or the situation, circumstance that you face in your daily life because that should not get yourself distracted or where you out from worshiping God but press towards the higher call by saying that he also encourages in the following verse down he says for our citizenship is not of the Rome 
you don't have to look your citizenship up with the Rome, but then our citizenship is in heaven. He makes them at the eternal perspective. He makes them think at the eternal perspective, saying that our citizenship is in heaven. So Apostle Paul is not only encouraging the Philippians, he's also encouraging you and I today. He's saying our citizenship is of the heaven. And in chapter 4, he encourages in these four areas. He's saying that we are to rejoice always because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We need to rejoice. Do not be anxious, but take all your requests in prayer and supplication. Make your request, bring it to the presence of God in prayer and supplication. He encourages everyone. And verse 13, he says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do not be weak. Do not consider that you are not worthy. You are not skilled. But then he encourages all the believers saying that when you are in Christ, you are in him. When God has called you, he will equip you. So you need to be strengthened in him by saying that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He is my ultimate strength, the source of wisdom, the source of strength, the source of skill, the source of talent. Everything that I need to serve God is from Him. So I need to receive from Him. We will receive it. So this is what Apostle Paul is saying. If I have received from Christ, you can also receive it from Christ. He's encouraging you and I today to set ourselves focus on Christ for all our needs to be met. So it's not only about the spiritual needs, but he also encourages in uh, verse 19, chapter 4, verse 19, all your physical needs can also be met by Christ because God will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. So you don't have to be worried about limiting yourself with what you have, but you can make your request to God because he is our supplier. If God can provide and meet the needs of the birds of the air, how much I he can uh, take care of you and me because we are his children. We are created in his likeness and image. God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son who died on the cross for you and me. So we are in his mind. Even when Jesus was on the cross, we, that is you and I, we're in the mind of Christ. So at times the enemy may say like, you know, God has forsaken you. That's the reason you've been persecuted. You've been stoned to death. Tell me what Apostle Paul did not go through on this earth. He was stoned to death. He was persecuted. He was pushed. He was shipwrecked. He was bitten by a viper. He was he starved. Uh, he has gone through many, many situations. What is that he has not gone through? But in midst of all that, he says that God is my strength. If we see that God never left Apostle Paul, he will never leave us. He will be with us because that's the promise that God has given to you and me, that he will never leave us nor forsake us, that he will hold us, that he will journey with us together. Nothing is hidden from God. So the reflection today, what is the reflection? Where are we? Despite the situation that the Apostle Paul was put in, he writes this letter to the Philippians from the prison, saying the letter of joy, which has a great lesson. Despite all your situation, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. It's only Apostle Paul can do that. And he's encouraging us, you and I, to imitate like him, to have a mind like him, the mind of Christ to be in us.
So Apostle Paul knew what uh, Philippi uh, um, the Philippians would be thinking because he encouraged them to carry this joy of the Lord in and through them because the joy comes in knowing Christ Jesus, not through any situation or circumstances because our joy is in the Lord. The situation, circumstance has no power to affect that joy. Nothing can steal the joy of God which is in us. So Apostle Paul is encouraging you and I can experience the same joy even when we are put into such difficult situation or circumstances so that we can rejoice and praise God. When we rejoice and praise God, just like how the heaven responded to Apostle Paul's praise, there was a great earthquake in that situation, in that prison. Same way, when we praise and rejoice, heaven will respond to our situation we will have deliverance from that situation we will have a breakthrough in that situation so this is what can happen to you and me so today let's be encouraged and let's look at god and ask ask god god give us the same attitude that you had given apostle paul that you had given apostle paul help us to have the same mindset so that we have the mind of Christ, we have the, uh, jo the joy of Christ within us, rooted and grounded within us, that the joy of the Lord may be our strength. Class today, can we look up to God and pray and ask God be our strength? Lord, as Apostle Paul writes in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, a mind should always think on things that are true, uh, the things that are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things of good report. If there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Father, I pray that, Lord, I pray that you will change our mind, change our heart, help us to be aligned, just like how Apostle Paul was aligned and he had the mind of Christ. I pray that we will be with him. We will be with you. We will have the same mind, Lord. We will carry the same right attitude, Lord, that is needed, just like how Apostle Paul had the right attitude in different situations. We will also have the right attitude, Lord. I pray that you will be rooted and grounded in us, Lord. Your word we, uh, will be rooted and grounded in us, oh, Father. The joy of the Lord will be our strength, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I surrender ourselves and our students into your hand, Lord. May you minister and work through each of us, Lord, so that this joy of Christ will be within us, which will deliver us from every situation, circumstances. Just like how the heaven responded to Apostle Paul, I pray that you will respond to us in our situation and you will give us the same deliverance, Lord, that which you gave to Apostle Paul and Silas. Thank you, Father. You are the same God. You are the faithful God who was with Apostle Paul and you are with us, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let your experience become tangible as we read each and every letter lord thank you father for uh, for drawing us close to you close to your heart lord thank you father in jesus name i pray amen amen thank you and see you all in the next class tomorrow god bless